You messed up. You're not the first, you won't be the last. Everyone has done it somewhere along the line. The thing is, what are you going to do about it? In this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to share with you three stages to help you to rectify the situation and start on the road forward again. And I'm also going to share a personal story of where I messed up and what I had to do to try and rectify the situation. The first thing you've got to do is admit that you did it. You know you messed up. But the thing is, what did you do? Is it something you did that you regret already and you know it won't change? Perhaps you borrowed someone's car and you went out and you had an accident or you got caught by the police doing something illegal. Perhaps you messed up at work. Perhaps you cheated somebody out of some money or you cheated on someone. There could be a multitude of reasons, but you've got to take hold of that and know that's what you did. And the next stage is to work out what we need to do. The first thing you have to do is you have to own it. You have to admit it was your fault and you cannot take excuses from yourself and you can't make excuses for yourself either. My dad used to say to me when I was a boy, you're responsible for everything you do. You do it, it's your fault. And I've always lived with that sort of responsibility. And this is what you have to do at a time like this. It's no good saying, oh, if so-and-so hadn't have wound me up, I wouldn't have done it. Because you did it, you have to own it. You can't say that you were pushed into doing it because you could always say no. The key, key thing you have to do is take possession of it and own it because it's yours. And then once you've owned it, you've got to stop it. If you're somebody who drinks a lot, for instance, and you know that your drinking is causing problems, then you have to own it and stop it. You have to call it a day and think to yourself, I'm never doing that again. That is one of the key things before you can move on to the next stage. And that next stage isn't easy because you've got to develop some backbone. You've got a man up face the world and admit what you did. You've got to go to the person you've wronged in one way or the other and admit that you've done it. And you've got to apologize and you've got to honestly mean what you're saying. And the other thing, of course, you've got to do is you've got to face and accept whatever's coming back to you because for every action, there's a reaction. And in this case, you've messed up. You know you have. You've apologised for it. Not only that, but in some cases, you may have to apologise to other people who are related into this incident for something that you've done. Your actions may have caused problems for other people as well. And so you have to take ownership, go and apologise, and apologise to every single person that's involved in it. But that may not be enough. You may end up having to face the consequences of going to court if you've done something that badly wrong. And now's a good time, I suppose, to tell you my own story and give you the background of what happened there. I was 14 and at boarding school. Now, I wasn't a popular person and I was very introverted, which sort of kept me away from making lots of friends. But while I was there, there was this little group of boys, there were four of them, and they looked so cool, and it seemed like everybody wanted to be their friend. And I was no different, really. I was introverted, but lonely, because I was away from my parents. I was living in a boarding school, and I, I wanted some support, so I wanted friends. And this group had so many people that, wanted to be with them that they I was no different and I wanted to be the same we'd had half term and everybody had come back for the second half of the term there was one boy who lived in Italy he'd been home for the week and he came back and he was really really homesick and you've got to remember we were 14 year old boys at the time and this boy was very down you could see he was and 
he was sat sobbing to himself. And I'd heard this group of four boys that I so wanted to be friends with talking about him and taking the mickey out of him. And I don't know why I did it, but during the day, they were around and this boy was sobbing and I made the mistake of my life and I went up to him and ripped into him and told him not to be such a wuss and so on and man up and be this and be that and I made the situation 10 times worse. When I looked around to them, they were laughing and went, well done, you told him. And it was exactly at that moment that I realised what I'd done. It was against everything that I'd been taught and brought up to be. I couldn't believe that I had ripped into somebody for no real reason other than to try and ingratiate myself with a group of people that at that moment I realised weren't a group of people that I wanted to know anyway. If I'd have thought about it earlier and wasn't so enclosed in my own loneliness, if you like, when they were taking the mickey out of this boy, I would have known then. But it took me doing the act to make it 10 times worse. And what also made it worse was the fact that I understood he was at homesick. His family lived in Italy. He was in a different country. My family lived 30 miles away from where I was at school. And I was really homesick too. And I knew that instead of what I did, I should have gone to him and perhaps put an arm around him and said, look, I know how you feel. But I was 14 and I wasn't very clever. But what I did know is that I was wrong. Did I apologise to him? Yeah, I did. But it took me a week. I was so embarrassed that I'd have done something that was so against what I'd been brought up to be and what I'd brought up to do. And I went and apologised to him. And to be fair, he wouldn't accept it. And I don't blame him. I realised that I was so far out of doing the right thing that it was unbelievable. And the funny thing is, 50 years have gone by and I've never forgotten what happened that day. And although it was an awful thing to do and I felt guilty for it for a long, long time, what it did do was teach me a major lesson that I've lived with for the rest of my life. And I can honestly and truly say I have never done anything like that again. Moving on then, the third part is what you have to do next. You have to forgive yourself for what you did because at the time you didn't know any better or you wouldn't have done it. And so it's important that you forgive yourself. If you know that you understand that you've done wrong, you've admitted you've done wrong, you've apologised for what you've done wrong, and you can't do any more than that, well, then you've got to forgive yourself because you know you've done the right thing. And I suppose after that, you have to put the past in the past and try and move on as a better person. I have to say, I think because of that event, I've become a better person. However, I wish I hadn't done what I'd done in order to become a better person, if that makes any sense. I'm certainly not the same person as I was then. And I'm glad that I apologised for what I did, because to be honest with you, I didn't want to. It would have been easier to have fudge my way out of it and pretend it had never happened. But had I done that, I would have had to live with the regret of knowing that I'd done it because that wasn't the person that I am. And as for you, if you've made that mistake and you've done all that sort of thing and you've done the owning up, you've never done it again, you've apologised and you've got to let it go. So if you've learned from your mistake and you've put it right, move on as a different person because that's now what you are. The other thing about that is depending on what it is that you've done, you may find that friends and family 
aren't quite so forgiving. And for the years that follow, they never let you hear the end of it. They bring it up in front of you whenever it suits them. It allows them to feel better than you. And they never forgive you, even though it may not have involved them. If that happens to you, then you've got to walk away or leave the people that are doing it to you behind because you can't move on while someone keeps ramming it into your head all the time. You made the mistake, you've done what you can to rectify the situation, you can move on because you've done what you needed to do. So I suppose the question I've got to ask you is, have you ever done anything that you've really regretted doing? What lessons did you learn from it? Feel free to comment down below if you've done something that you're ashamed of. I don't need to know what it was. If you've learned the lesson and you've been able to move on from that, I would love to know how it's turned you around and how it's made your life better. And I suppose in saying that, you've got to ask yourself, did you become a better person because of it? In my case, I think I did. I think I'm a much better person than had I not done it. If you come out of the other side of it and you've done all those steps that you need to do and you feel actually good about yourself again, then move on because messing up isn't the worst thing in the world. It can be the making of you. Now, if you're still with us, if you found any value from the video, please click that button down below, press that like button, share it if you think it could be helpful to somebody else. And if you've been around for a while and you haven't yet done it, I would love it if you could subscribe and become part of our community. And if you click up there in the next video, I'm talking about the choices that you make in your journey through this life. I'll see you next time.